And yeah, it's, it's a, so you're gonna go for the Sanctity Ember Spirit here. Uh, that's a mid Ember Spirit. I mean, you're gonna have a r relatively okay time. I, I still prefer just to go take go to offline. Heavy melee lineup by Little Gun though. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> looking like it's full engage and. So what would you then... I mean, because you're going to be fighting into a, an Axisism for the Death Rock. The Bane's got a lot of control. Scarth does come out good with the um, the Bloodseeker Rupture. You'll be able to get the Mystic Flur, even with the, the Searing Chains for a little bit there as well. Um, but uh, again, a decent amount with the, the Undying, the Bloodseeker coming out. A decent amount of frontline here. So Lilgun could look for... What are we saying? An off lane? Because it's going to be maybe support Undying. Um... Trying to think um, what else they could go for. I'm, I'm actually kind of wondering, by the way, this is a lot of times we're seeing Ace play the Skywrath Mage, usually as a position five, mm -hmm. which is making me think is this going to be it? Could be an offline undying, and we see a position four coming out after this. Because, like I said, this uh, sky I mean, obviously, Kishka could just be like, I mean, it's not like he can't play it, right? It's not like yeah. it's, it's going to be an issue. They could just play uh, put it as a position four, and they'll be fine. But we more often see Skywrath Mage go five for little gun here. Which yeah, make, it gives me pause that this undying could be a core, and I wouldn't mind it. You know, you have like these, you know, him and Bloodseeker and Ember Spirit. Like you said, these frontline guys, not Ember Spirit as much, but as a core undying, you can definitely go for it. And it's not like they have a ton of damage on Fnatic to chew through it. You know, yes, Exorcism and Spirit Siphon do, but they take a while. Bane is not really a damaging support. He's more, it's a lot more control. Marcy can do damage, but as we said, the hero. It's fallen off a little bit as a support, so I don't know. This is an interesting draft coming out from Little Gun based on where the Undying goes. For yeah. Fnatic, uh, are they going to go with a carry here or a or some sort of or mid lane? What are they going to show with? Are they gonna, they're going to keep it flexible with the Marcy. They go with the Shadow Fiend. Huh. Fnatic. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it's going to be Armel Shadow Fiend, Death Prophet for jabs. And maybe DJ on the Marcy, Bane for, for Jean Well, they're just going to pick the carry last. Yeah, and they do have the final pick as well, so they can react mm -hmm. to um, whatever comes out here for Little Gun um, and get that kind of best matchup. Um, yeah, looking at it as well, the Pudge, pudge goes. So <laughs> Little Gun is just like, we, we don't need to see that in this game. You know, we saw enough of it in the, in the last game, and, you know, Fnatic, they can go for something else. Um, Delina being banned out here now as well. So. Axe, yeah, so they're looking at offlane bans here, Fnatic, so they think this might be an Undying 4, um, the Monkey King goes for Lilgun. Yeah, they're, they're, they believe that it's not going to be, yeah, it's like I said, they don't believe this Undying is going to be core, they don't believe in it, Fnatic, you know, they think it's still, it should be a support like like he believe, like he he where he belongs, you know, should mm. be trying to join the big boys. Alright, well, Fnatic, they banned the Mars, which is a hero that they play quite a bit on Lilgun, and it's going to be the Sand King last pick. All right, this is one of 11's, uh, like, I think it's like his fourth most picked hero this year. It's not bad. Interesting to see come out, like, pretty decent team fight. You know, you got the Epicenter, the Tombstone, uh, Bloodseek Rupture, followed by Sky Thames. Like, there's a good amount of damage from Sand King, good amount of Burly Boys at the front. Fnatic, are they going to go for a Juggernaut? I think Juggernaut or Lifestealer would be kind of decent here to have in the lane. And you might need something like that. Yeah, um, just looking, yeah, and the Sand King as well, you know, the Fnatic's heroes so far aren't really, apart from the Marcy. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's different. That's... That is... That's a lone druid! That, uh. that is a, yeah, a lone druid, so he's going to bring in his uh, furry scurry bear out, and yeah, I... Mm, Do they have sure a way to deal with that on Little Gun? Uh, well, they do have a decent amount of damage. Well, let's say once it gets that charge, you do percentage damage. So you, so that extra health that the lone druid has or the bear has, on like true form, doesn't mean as much to Bloodseeker. Like I said, you're always doing you're always doing that extra percentage damage, so it's nice. But I don't I don't think that little gun has enough damage to really chew through the health for Raven, right? Like he goes true form. You got good damage with the you know, Sky Wrath Mage, but like Sand King, Ember Spirit, Undying, these guys take their time to do damage. They have good damage, but take take time to do it. And a lone druid in ulti form, 3k, 3.5k life, should be kind of okay with that. Only Bloodseeker really deals with him. 
And you look at Armel with the presence effects, buildings, exorcism, lone druid, demolish on the bear. They can really take buildings fast on Fnatic. I I'd be worried. I'd be a little bit worried here. They got good team fight for Logan. They're a little bit more prepared than last time, but. But Fnatic, their lineup is built to fight and take buildings. And that's kind of scary when you're up against the, you know, a TI caliber team. Yeah. Um, so Lilgun, like you say, they've got a little bit more front line in them. But does this put them on a clock again? You know, do, does do we are we going to see um, Raven coming out of the the jungle, coming out of the farm in the first like 10, 15 minutes? Yeah. When the ultimates are up and grouping up with the rest of the team. Um, I mean, go on. all he really needs is like a mask of madness, and that's enough to make your bear pretty scary just with that, right? Yeah. So, it, we might be seeing like Fnatic just run over. They're like, hey, look, we're winning the game. Let's just go take towers. If they fall behind, Raven can farm, but ba like he's always been a super active carry. His hero pool has switched over, you know, over the years that he's been playing, but this play style hasn't. You know, he's been active. He's always been active, and he's I don't expect him to take a backseat in this game. And what do you think? So, Mask of Madness for the Burr as well. Do you go into a, a Desolator after that for the Lone Druid? You know, is that something that... Because, I mean, it helps in the team fights as well as the... Um, as well as taking buildings. Or is there something else that you think the Lone Druids are looking for at the minute? Um, at, uh, before the, the Desolator? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is fine. Assault QS is fine, like you said, just for that extra aura with the, with the Shafin. You don't really need as much... Reduction armor reduction star because you do have the presence of the Dark Lord, mm -hmm. which can affect buildings, so he can go for that if he wants. But yeah, it's uh, Deso's good. Um, Mask of Asgard to be the first item afterwards. We'll see what he wants to go for. Yeah, he um, does have it queued up after the phase boots. Um, then mm -hmm. Orb of Corrosions come out afterwards. And how um, how much do Lil gonna have to pay attention to an early Roshan with this lineup coming out for Fnatic as well? It's it's presence of Dark Lord, right? I mean, it's always good. Plus, you have the sidekick. You put the sidekick on either Armel or the Lone Druid Bear, and you get a buttload of extra damage. Especially if you have Mask of Madness on either of them, which at least you'll have on the Bear, so, as well as Life Steal. It's a, it's something to be very scared of. Hmm. Uh, Little Guns Draft. It's not it's not bad. You know, they have a good amount of team fight. They have all, solid sustain, good control. But Phoenix, this. With the way they played, with their heavy team, not heavy team, so heavy push, something to be scared of. Yeah, and I, I like this as well. Raven sends his bird to the complete opposite side of the map. Just going to be doing a little bit of scouting here. Because it is, I mean, 1100 he health. It. Does he actually get it? Oh. Oh, yeah, he got it. He yeah. got it. Because I was wondering, I was like, did he take? Which one did he take? <laughs> he, took the, he got both. One with the bear, one with the human fanatic with three bounty ruins. Oh, the humanity. And yeah, so Fnatic, it's a little bit of a Brucey bonus here to start with to getting that third bounty ring. Good play, like I said, the the, the Spirit Burst sitting on 1100 health with third Tango, Eater Tango, 13 regen coming through. You know, how do you really take that down before the rune spawn? You, and the answer is obviously you don't. Yeah, right, it's like, oh, well, that's, he's just going to stay alive. <laughs> Nothing we can do. Uh, 11, if, yeah, he's going to take the point caustic finale. So at least you'll be able to sort of damage the bear. You can see Bear's already lost about like 30% of his health. So in in the laning stage, they might, they do have ways of dealing with the bears. You know, it's not like they're just like the bears. Like, oh, you just go in and you can ignore everything. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So eleven sitting in the slain. What's the build here for the Sand King? Does he want to go for that early point into the burst strike, or is it just going to be Corsic finale and Sandstorm to come out for him here? You have to get at least one point, right? Because once you once you get level six, if you want to use your ulti, if you want Kishka to help you out with the, what's his guy like his Mystic Flare, you need at least one point as ultimate. But I don't think he's, I don't know if he'll be able if he wants to take it that early. There is pretty solid kill potential, you know. Skywrath, Mage, and Sand King—that's a lot of damage. However, if he feels threatened, he feels he can't go for a kill. He might just go for more points in Sandstorm instead. Yeah. Um, watch it onto the bottom lane as well. 43 just throwing out these blood rights, just forcing Jabs and DJ away from the creeps. Ace trying to do what he can, but this is going to be two melee heroes up against uh, Jabs here. Oh, really nice disposed back. So, where's that Crypt one going to come through? It's not actually going to be thrown out just yet. Blood right going to be used, but again, Jabs and DJ just going to be sitting on the edge of this. The cave stacks, and again, Undying seems to be the build at the minute. You just go for max mangoes, as many as you can buy uh, at the start of the game, and go for these stacks. 20 stacks here on the Undying. From the decays yeah it's not that hard to get it right like dj's taking eight he's going to be uh, putting a lot of death prop death prop is like oh i don't want to go spirit siphon but he lose a lot of strength so you can't really trade as much as you'd like so i mean this is what we see from undying all the time 
The issue with Bobblin is that they have no stuns. So at any point, if someone just teleport, they like, they will just teleport. You can't. They walk out blood right unless you get like two zombies on you. You're always gonna be able to walk out of it. So it's it's a little scary here for a little gun. The kill potential is way more on Fnatic side thanks to the fact that you know you have this thing called a stun and a slow. <laughs> yeah. Um... And Marcy actually going for no points into the rebound, going for that early point into the sidekick as well, which offers this viability. There's going to be this pose as well. Ace going to be slowed down. Can he get himself away from this? Again, just the damage stacking up onto Ace here now as well. Even with those decay stacks, he was taking so much punishment. Top lane, they might be able to get the kill here. First blood goes away of 11. So he does go for that two points into the Boros Strike right off the bat after that Caustic Finale. Does the damage over to the Bane, and the Bane just doesn't have any mobility to get away after that Boros Strike does come through. Yeah, the damage, it's, it's insane, right? Skyrath, Mage, you, with Concussive Arcane Ball, you have, it's not just damage, but you also have stuns and control. Mm -hmm. So this is, might be Fnatic's kind of scariest lane. Jeanwell, he'll be okay dying though, right? It's like if it's, someone's gonna die, you'd way rather be him than Raven. And overall, Little Gun lanes way better in this game compared to game, game one, where they were like a little bit more passive, a little bit more farming. Here's like, no, 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 they're keeping up with all the lanes. Yeah, um, mid lane. How's it looking? Sanctity, he's actually not good. This, right, this surprised me a little bit. No points in the, the Flame Guard coming out, even though, you know, Shadow Fiend. So are you just looking to dodge off the raises with the Sleight of Fist in this lane? Probably. Like, there's just too much damage, right? It's like, the Flame Guard's always going to be removed. It's just way too much. Might as well just go for for the control. Hmm. And he might consider putting a point in just for you get the damage when you dive on people, but if you're not maxing it, is that really going to be worth much, right? Like, everyone else has a way to, of removing it. Yeah. Um, and Armel as well. He's getting ahead nine uh, denies here to the five coming out of the Amber Spirit. So Sanctity, he's fallen up behind just a little bit by about half a level here behind Armel. It's okay if you can reach level six in time, you know, because you are a lot more mobile than the Shadow Fiend. If you can show up and help people, you know, if you can get kills on like the Bane, you can get kills on Marcy, you're okay with, with being like you're not as. Gold dependent, you are a little bit more level dependent. You want to hit that six fast. Yeah. And he's doing he's doing generally okay with that. But like I said, nine denies, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, you can just see him. I mean, he's having to play behind or around the tier one tower here now as well. Only coming through for last it's on the, the slight of fist in this river. And you can see Armel, he's just controlling this creep wave to the best of his ability here. And you say, looking for the denies, he's up to 11 now. And uh, Sanctity comes forward, he's going to be hit by two Wait. raises. Raven gets the kill to Kitchener on the top lane. Are they going to be able to go any further now as well? Yanuel's getting pretty down low. 11, he might still survive. Nope. Sandstorm, there was a sentry down here, was just on the inside of it. And they get the kill onto the Sand King there as well. Is there anything sadder than level one sandstorm? It's like so tiny. You know, as he tries to move to the side wave, I'm like, no, no, dude, there's, there's yeah. nothing. Oh, mid lane. Mid lane, yeah, it's gonna be Armel goes down and Sanctity. Okay, Kishka with a TP in from the, the death. Gets that kill, so a really nice rotation. Fills the, uh, did he fill the bottle? I don't actually think he filled the bottle in time. You know, there's still an empty bottle here for Sanctity. So, you know, he just couldn't hold that fountain water uh, to give it to yeah. Sanctity. By the way, that, that t double point in Searing Chains made a huge difference because it gave him enough time for Kisha to show up. He'd probably have gone kill either way, but that's why he's not going Flame Guard. It's like, just want to get as much control. Although Sanctity, this could be painful. Armel. Yeah, he's going to be able to come in. The Nightmare to set up. Where are those rays? His long range rage, but he does get the slight fist off. Sanctity. So going to be taking damage to the, the damage from the Brain Sap. And Yanuel, yeah, from Towers. But Yanuel's, he's, he's all right. He's fine. He's fine. He gets himself out. And there you go, Sanctity level 6 in 6 minutes. And looks like the, the bottom rune is going to spawn. It's going to be the region rune. We'd really like to get that as an Ember Spirit. He actually, this is level 6 before Armel by a tiny bit. And ODJ is here. That, that's not going to go for you, Sanctity, unfortunately. No. Um, yeah, because it, he puts himself at risk. So Sanctity, he's just going to drop the remnant, TP back. But there's a really nice Observer Ward here as well from Fnatic that just tracks the, the movements of the Ember Spirit because they saw him going up. Uh, and yeah, the movement came over from DJ, just closing down that bottom rune, and they, they couldn't really, you know, he couldn't really get out to try and contest onto the Seer Sanctity. Wonder if they're going to be trying to push, put any pressure in the top lane here. And yeah, DJ's here already. Oh, they're going to try oh, and make another oh. move. Sentry goes down. There's going to be the Boros Strike through now as well. But it is going to be the Radiant Sentry just getting some d out. Nice and 11 slope. tries to get himself away. He's got no Soundstorm for the next 24 seconds. Is there going to be a root from the Burr? Mm, it's getting close. He's getting the right clicks off, but he's not actually rooting out. There it goes. Last hit root. That's all he needed. And Raven picks up the kill onto 11. Um, Ace, not quite sure. I, mean, I know he's stacking a little bit here and there, but might, he might need to show up help his team top. Because bottom lane, 43 is doing fine. 
Meanwhile, like top of the arse, a little bit struggling here. They need help for the Sand King. And yeah, he might just want to maybe babysit Sanctity in the meantime. Either way, we see it start being a little bit active with his team. Has the point Tombstone now as well. But they spot this. They, they know. They see exactly where Ace is. Yeah, the even got up. I th was there any stacks? I don't think there was any stacks in this jungle. It was just the, the rotation coming through from the Shadow Fiend from Armel here with a bit of space in the lane to take away one of the camps from the side of Lilgun. Um, they do have a small stack, the, the Wolf and the Golem, but yeah, it's not, not much of a stacking game going on right now. Hmm. It's uh, SEA, you know, everyone's just like, let, let, let's just bash heads until, until we see who comes out on top. Yeah, and taking a look at the net oh, worth as well. Armel. Eight minutes in. Armel, there is going to be a really nice rebound, but he does it with a slight fist now as well. Does he have the dispose? Doesn't want to throw it out. It would have only been a slow. And yeah, Sanctity does get the dive away here to one of his other remnants. Gets a double damage rune as well. All right. We'll see. We'll see what Sanctity is going to do with it right now. He's got one assist, and that was only in his own lane. But I'd try to apply a bit more pressure. Top lane, 11. Oh, the Raven, though. His burst getting really low. And as scary as it is, the Spirit Burr, it was just uh, being contested. Kishka rotating in. You know, January wasn't anywhere nearby here either. And Raven just had to back it away because, uh, again, the Sandstorm doing a lot of nice damage. Rotation. He's about doing a lot of damage here. Jabs on the bottom lane. It's going to be a really nice rotation from Sanctity. He pops out double damage in here now as well. And Jabs, he's going to be taking down Slight Fist. Secures his kill on Sanctity. Really nice rotation. Top lane, though, Ace. No stuns. Couldn't get in range. And Kishka playing on the bare minimum of health. So he doesn't want to be risking his life here. He will be backing up. Nightmare comes out from Januel, but again, no rotations in. So this is just going to be an inconvenience for the Sand King. Not a full gank as Armel gets the kill on to 4-2-3 in the bottom lane. Yep, both uh, bottom lanes, both mids rotate the bottom lane. Both mids get the kill on the core. Meanwhile, top lane, they're trying to do something here, but uh, it's kind of tough, right? You know, Raven, he's got that bear in front of him, that big meat shield. Januel's doing a good job of just, like, making sure no one can kill him. Plus, he had that level 2 brain sap. And, and like I said, Kishka, no health. And check out the CS, by the way. Armel at 75, Sancti with 42 as only. Sancti, he is getting a little bit active, but that is a pretty big difference in CS. Yeah. And in terms of that worth, it's 1,500 gold in favor of, uh, of Armel. Oh, look at this again. Top lane, the sidekick comes out on the burr for that extra attack. Are they going to be able to do the damage onto 11? One more right click. He does get it off. And now Ace, the first hit, Root. Oh, that's where the roots were hidden now as well. And Ace, three heroes. He's trying to keep himself alive with the Soul Rip, but the bird chasing down. Does he have the range? He absolutely does to get this kill. Raven into the true form, chasing down. It's Kishka now as well. Kishka, can he get himself out? Not with this root coming through. Backline Sanctus, he's trying to do what he can. He's going to be able to get the kill onto Kishka. Raven with the triple kill. The Nightmare comes out onto the Ember Spirit. And he does have three remnants to jump away to now as well. But do they get another first? hit root onto Sanctity. It's going to be the second one, so still pretty good for him now as well. It looks like Sanctity trying to get himself away from this. He does drop a remnant to dive away to in the river. But mid lane, by the way. He's going to get himself oh, onto 11. It. Yeah, it goes in, takes a little bit of damage. Doesn't have any points in his, in his epicenter yet. Opting to max out Sandstorm. This is more. This is a standard build. You know, you're 2-4. Maybe you, epicenter, sorry, you might take epicenter if you don't take Caustic Finale, but you usually will. So 2-4 and 1, you might take it at level 8. Kind of needs to, you know, because Fnatic, they're you know they're putting a foot on the on, on the gas a little bit, and look like at they're having trouble keeping up here. Yeah, um, four and seven, three K net worth lead, and a lot of that comes between the the safe laners and the mid laners here. Going to be a smoke rotation, Januel as well as DJ four two three, just backing himself away. He's going to go for the TP, so they want to make something happen here on the top lane. Um, maybe take the pressure, but. Raven, he's already TP'd himself down to the bottom lane. Maybe looking, he's got that Mask of Madness on the burr as well here. So, going to be able to, and is going to be the Desolator to come out afterwards, which going to add to the destruction capabilities here of Raven. Taking those buildings, taking heroes, taking Roche even quicker once this item comes out. Yep, and you get like tons of minus, minus armor here. Mid lane though, they're trying to go for kill on Sanctity, but they bat fires and they lose their Marcy instead. Fiend script's gonna come out and jabs. He might carry on going. Sanctity can he get himself away from this. Does he have a remnant to jump away to? He absolutely well does. Uh, that is much needed. Like little gun, they need to be careful here because uh, that this is very close for them. If you a couple more deaths on their side, oh, big jump here by Armel. What's with the blink dagger? We don't see this as often as we used to. Ace drops the tombstone. Um. Yeah, no, you usually see the, the Shadow Blade coming out so you can set up for the kills. Top lane. Top lane. The Blood Rite's going to be dropped here now as well. Will there be a rebound in? DJ has to wait out the Blood Rite silence now. Rupture comes out onto Jabs. Jabs wants to carry on chasing. He's got that drain. There is going to be a really nice rebound into the damage coming through from the Unleash. And DJ and Jabs 
Just group up really nice with that kill. And yeah, because of the drain coming through from the Spirit Siphon, Jabs wasn't really too fussed about the rupture damage. Yeah, it's like, it's like oh, I can I, but I can choose to get the, all the health I'm losing back anyway, even though it's pure damage. And Ace as well as Kishka, they come top, but uh, they can't find anything. So Fnatic, good rotation going top, getting the kill on 4-2-3. It's not been his series, by the way. 0-2-1 and one this game, he almost wasn't looking so hot from either. It's a lot on Sanctity to make space. And 11, he does have the Epicenter at level 8. He is going to go for the Blink Dagger, 50 gold away. So that is going to give a lot more team fight, a lot more, a lot more power to Little Gun's uh, rotations. Yeah, top lane, Jabs. Ace has popped that goal and flesh goal in form now as well, but the Exorcism comes out of the silence. Going to be a really nice rebound stun. Was that disposed back into the damage? And Ace, even though he was a big tanky boy, he's just going to be taken down here. And while this is going on the bottom lane, Tier 2 Tower will be taken by Raven coming in Dear with God. it again. The bird, just the destruction, gets the root onto the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit, though, has a remnant if he needs it. Searing Chains comes out. It's going to be able to create that gap. But yeah, 13 minutes in, a Tier 2 Tower on the bottom lane has already fallen here for the side of Lil Gun. And I think this is going to create enough space top lane. There's going to be a bow strike through, but can he take down 11? The dust is on him. Gonna be revealed. He's gonna try and go now, but does he have enough damage in this ultimate DJ? He's gonna go for the TP. There isn't gonna be a bow strike coming out as well. They do get the kill onto Jabs. With a kill, right? Yeah, DJ. Look. Oh, Ace is gonna, is he gonna walk right up to the ultimate. No, he gets it. He just spots them out. Can he get a tombstone off in time? Jean will sleep, but it's gonna be hit anywhere by the concussive shot. Just try and TP away. And guess what? There's no stuns. Oh man, the only stuns you have is bow strike along with. And Ember Spirit Searing Chase. If these guys aren't around, you can just run away all the top lane. And yeah, Raven, look at that. He transforms. He's pretty tanky. Yeah, really nice double bow strike though through the bow as well as the Lone Druid himself. Kishka's going to be rotating up. He doesn't have the mana now, but there's going to be really nice Requiem Souls. So they get the kill onto 11. And they might carry on going even further. The Remnant dropped in the back lines. Tombstone will be dropped, but can he take this one down? The Silence comes through. It's going to be a really nice rebound into the stun. Was well, that Dispose the Burr? They don't even need the Dispose. Just gets that kill through the Burr. And it looks like Raven wants to carry on going. Kishka, he's going to oh. be in trouble. The little piggy coming through from Death Prophet. They get that tier one tower. Kishka, the Silence comes out from that ancient seal, but Kishka, the Spirit Vessel, it's taking him down. It might be enough to get the kill. It will be. And Jab secures that kill. Does a little dance on his way out. And check out where Sanctity is hiding in the trees. Like, please, God, don't let them know where I am. He doesn't have a TP scroll. He's only, he doesn't want to use any remnants to sort of get out of here. He has one there. And John well knows, by the way. He walks through the remnant. He knows that there's someone behind him. DJ catches him all the way out. Is he going to die? Oh, the Fiend's grip. And this might be the end of Sanctity as we know it. Yeah, he's going to be taken down. Uh, didn't even need the brain sap to finish the job. The, free, the Fiend's grip comes out. And yeah, really nice position. Fnatic, they take a tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Immediately move to the top side of the map to take objective to secure this area, which does then secure them the Roche. And yep, there's a Desso already finished, by the way. So it's, it's nine armor with the Orb of Corrosion. With the, and then you have an additional 14, sorry, 13 armor with the person of the Dark Gold, which isn't even maxed out, only level one. So buildings, Roshan, heroes, all melting to the might of Fnatic right now. Yeah, 15 minutes. They are on an absolute tour at the minute here. 13 to 6 and a 9k net worth lead. Aegis coming out for the Lone Druid. What else can they find here? They might be able to get a Nightmare off. Again, the Brain Sap uh, is uh, capable of doing damage, but doesn't matter. The Silence comes out from the Ancient Seal into the Blood Rite Rupture combo. 4-2-3, but that's going to be for a Bane, and only a Bane. Armel, though, he's in trouble. Do they have enough to take him down, or there's going to be a Mystic Flare to come through? And Kishka, yeah, really nice grouping up here with 11 to find this kill. That was pretty massive. Unfortunately for them, their Tier 2 top takes a huge amount of damage. But if you're a little gun, you got you take the little victories that you can get. You know, you get the you should get Armel off the board, you get Jonwell off the board, and you're feeling well, not good, but at least you feel like you have a chance to fight. <laughs> Bloodseeker's not too far from the from his BKB. At that point, you do have to worry a little bit about uh, quite a lot, right? It's like Fiend's mm. grip as well, as well as what uh, the the bear does with the with the entangling roots. Actually, it does not pierce BKB, but you know, there's still the uh, exorcism damage you have to worry about. So it's not. Like you get BKB and you have completely free reign. Yeah, you, you do still need to worry about it. The fear comes out as well. Eleven's just going to sit in the sandstorm. Uh, there is no sentry. It doesn't look like for the bird or the, the hero here. It is going to be a three, four man rotation. Really All kill five Raven. heroes. Yeah, they want to get on top of Raven. But there is going to be an Aegis on this hero. They're going to be able to get him with a slight fist. But Searing Chains is not going to be able to keep him alive and locked down. He's going to be silenced by the Ancient Seal. Was the rest of his team now? DJ is going to be rotating in. There's going to be an Exorcism on the back lines now as well. Tombstone will be dropped. Raven, the bird, is going to be in a whole lot of trouble. This is going to be a really nice rupture. And this is going to be, yeah, Raven, a lot of utility if they can take this bird down. It's been surviving for a little bit, but the Sandstorm, now they're going to be able to pop this Aegis. 
And can they carry on going into this? It looks like the back lines was that Fiends group. It comes out. They're going to be able to catch out onto the Scarath Mage. But 4 2 3. The raise is going to be a little bit too short. Can he run himself away from this? The Spirit Vessel. The Crypt Swarm. They find the kill and jabs. It's going to be Kishka. Do they have anything to interrupt the TP? Nightmare doesn't find the vision. So they're not going to be able to do it. And it's just going to be Raven on his Billy Todd here for the next 80 seconds. But should still be enough to take down this tier 2 tower. Mm. Yeah, the fact that they were able to take the, the bear down twice, though, that doesn't actually show in the fight recap as something they got, but that is 600 gold. Mm. You know, that is actually a substantial amount. Overall, though, Fnatic, very happy with how that fight goes. They expand the Aegis, they, but they did get a core kill, they get a tower as well. It's like they, they don't mind how that fight went at all for Fnatic. They are very much on in the pace that they want to be on. Yeah. Um, 10k net worth lead. They uh, got a really good fight again. Uh, did they force out? They didn't force out any BKBs, I don't think. Yeah, Sand King doesn't have his. He's actually going towards a Yule Scepter. Um, Ember. No, he's going towards a, a Maelstrom. And this Ember, 5.6k net worth to the 9.3. Yeah, he is just not having a good time. He might be dead, actually. If John, oh, John well tried to get the Nightmare off, they would have been able to fall with the, uh, the Shafin Ultimate. But they're like, nah, well, he... It's a tough game for Sanctity, however, it might be a tough game right now for Jabs here, might be losing his life. Yeah, oh, Ancient Seal, he's going to be caught in the, the Mystic Flare there as well, and Eleven picks up that kill, four heroes grouping up for that, and this is kind of where Lil Gun, you know, they are finding these picks, like you said, they are slowly but surely finding a couple of kills and starting to catch back up. 9k net worth, though, is a massive gap to close. Yeah, it's a 90% advantage for Fnatic, by the way, for people wondering, what is the, uh, what's the graph saying? It's 90% in favor of of uh, Fnatic, and it, it is, I mean, they're feeling it, right? Like, it is not, he's just getting a kill on Jabs, doesn't really change too much here. Yeah, the mid-tier one, maybe a fight after a DJ, did you overextend? He looks like he did. Yeah, the Ancient Seal sounds comes out into the Burrow Strike, really nice pick up here if they can find it. The reveal though, Armel's gonna be in, does he get that, he does get the Requiem Souls off. And finds the kill Sanctity, he has to run himself away. Fiend's Grip's already been used, so they get the fear onto him, he just dies. He absolutely melts and Raven picks up a double kill. Dude, the damage coming out from Fnatic's side, it is absolutely insane. And yeah, poor, like Sanctity, he had, a, he had a remnant, but he didn't have the time to actually throw it out and get anything from it. Very unfortunate. By the way, Spirit Bear is equipped with the Dagger of Bristful, which can give you 40 damage extra. For a high attack speed hero like him with a Mask of Madness, that 40 damage is insane. Yeah, and he's close to getting a basher here now as well. Raven just needs the recipe, so he's going to be a, a under 400 gold away. This Burr is an absolute tank of the minute. Well, where are we with 4-2-3? He's going to have the the BKB up in the next fight. He's very close to that, about 50 gold. Then he's queued up both the Molinir and the Shard. I imagine you want to kind of want to go for the Shard first. You get a lot of sustain out of it. I wonder if he's if that's what he's thinking of. He's going to be like, no, I need to get Molinir. Instead, oh, we'll see. We'll see how we are, what he what he aims for next. In the meantime, has everyone else, not much. You know, Sanctity. He is pretty. De he is. He doesn't even have the Maelstrom, dude. Like poor guy. Yeah, and it might be getting worse here for Lil Gun. There's going to be the reveal, but the blink comes out from the Sand King. Sand King with the epicenter straight into that bow strike. Just needs to run himself away from this one. And he might be able to go into Armel. Armel does have that BKB, but still needs to worry about things like the rupture that would do damage and just keep him in place. Yeah, the uh, Manic, not at no overextending here. The Tombstone on the high ground along with the war. That's just too, too way too risky. Even with a 10k advantage, you can still lose the fight. Alright, Spirit Rare, they have. This one's down to about, I don't know, 60% health, but they also have Raven ready to summon another one, so mm -hmm. killing that twice, yeah, difficult for them right now. What's... Well, what's Skyrath Mage going for? The Rod of Ados, he's not far from it. What helped them all with a little bit of that control we talked about, right? You only, yeah. you only have the City Chains and the Burrow Strike. Having a little bit extra would help. Armel, can they catch him here? They have, you know... He has right, that that's, BKB that's though. He's just going to pop it. He's going to turn and Kishka ace. <laughs> They're going to run. Armel is going to be TP into the mid lane. Might stack up. You can see 4 2 3 as well in the, the dire jungle. He's just trying to find this farm. He's finished the BKB now. But while this is going on, you can see Fnatic. They're just grouping up. They've got done so much damage to this tier 3 tower in the top lane. I, don't think I want to say that as well. But like Armel is just he's like, oh, you guys want to chase me? It's fine. Your base literally melts within three seconds if my guys are on it. So you gotta be careful. Order three, 
Again, slowly kind of catching up in terms of net worth. It's but he's still 4k behind Raven. He's farming as he's farming as far as fast as he can, but it's not enough. Getting at least some of those tier two items for his team will be pretty helpful for them. Hmm. But at the same time, the map, little gun, he's the one basically farming. You know, Sanctity and Eleven don't have much going on for them. Right, that's oh. a smoke up. Who can they find? Oh, they're going for DJ. They're going to be able to get on top. But the, no, the Nightmare, it keeps them alive for a little bit longer. There's going to be the Ancient Seal Silence, so he's not going to be able to do anything through this fight, though. They get the rupture out. What's he going to be able to do here? On to. Does Jabs get himself away from this? 4 2 3. Even through the BKB, he's just being right clicked down, and now Eleven needs to run. They get the kill onto the Bane, onto the Marcy, but are they going to be able to get anything more out of this? The Root comes through. The Silence onto the Embers, where he's just going to be taken care of. Absolutely deleted here. And three heroes, four heroes with a buyback coming through. And this is just going to be a push through. Maybe a Rax as well for the side of Fnatic. And again, yeah, like you say, even if Raven, he loses that first burr, he's going to have a second one in his arsenal to come through. And I don't know if Lilgun can fight into this. And, uh, they, didn't, they didn't actually take Presence Effects buildings, but they don't even need to. Like, the the rage, the Miller actually takes a lot of damage. Armel just BKBs now. He, they had a bit of an opening on Lilgun's side. If they could take kill him while the BKB was down, they saw him using the bomb lane. Mm -hmm. But... By the time you know this, the fight ends, by the time they're pushing high ground, he just has it available again. Fnatic could be even a faster game than, than the game one here, which they took in 26 minutes. That's the first melee racks. Are they going to be stopping? Roshan's going to take about 50 seconds. They don't know exactly, but they have you know, they have an inkling. It's going to be within the next two minutes, basically. Sorry, the next three minutes for them. Yeah, might just want to wait for it to go for a death push, and there's really not much little gun can do about it. They smoke up. They want to see if they can find anyone. Armel's on the other side. Could be a fight for them. No DJ either. If they can go for John Well. Pick the blood right comes out. They're gonna be able to get the kill maybe onto the bane. The bane can't get himself away from this here. Even getting the curry here of the lone druid for the lone druid with that micro. I mean he's micro on the bar as well. So why not? BKV comes out from Jabs. Jabs is just gonna go for the TP. Nothing to disrupt this TP out. And that would have been. I mean timing on this might be. If they'd have got another, if they'd have got a core out of that, you know, if they'd have caught up the lone druid or maybe even the death prop, the would have been perfect timing for the Roche. Roche will be coming up Ace. in the next four seconds. Ace, get, get back in there. He leaves it. Oh, he's going back in just as a spawn. He's like, all right, guys, it's there. They know. Fnatic doesn't know yet, but they'll probably find out within very soon here. And are they going to go for it? Looks like. Uh, What's, what's Blitzing? He's got something coming out for him. I don't, did he buy the shard? He, still, he has too much gold for the shard. No, it's like, no, no nothing. All right, the, the smoke on smoke action. The bear is here. You don't want to kill it. Everyone smoked up here. Yeah, with the yeah, smoke walking in from Lilgun. Happy Santa. He's got it. He's, he's queuing it up. So Raven the Burr, he's started it now as well. Smokes are going to break 11. Does he want to try and make a go here? Raven, you can see, I love this as well. He's keeping himself in the trees long enough that the, the Burr can get the attacks onto Roche and Lilgun. They don't know where anyone else is. The Blood Rite comes out, but all they see is the Burr. And they're not sure where they can get aggressive to. And, uh, alright, smoke expires on Lilgun. Fnatic, they just reapply the smoke. They keep going. I think this one was spotted, though. But they expect them to come from a rather different angle. Do they see anything? Oh, they come from behind. Ace is going to be the first victim. Drops an ice tombstone. We do have vision. And in fact, they may not want to take this fight. They can see everything. They can oh. get the Rotomato Tos onto Marcy. Nightmare comes out trying to protect him. But is it going to be enough? Just BKB. Yeah. Does, yeah. Not used it just yet. Rupture there. DJ has to pop the BKB. Trying to keep himself alive but can't move. Just has to go for the TP. Does Sanctity want to come in? He does slight fist comes out. But it's not going to be enough damage to get the kill. And yeah, Marcy, at least he know now, Little Gun. They forced at least one hero back to base. What can they do from this? And that person, and when DJ comes back, he's not going to have the BKB. Mm -hmm. By the way, Arcane Blink is finished off on Shadow Feed. So being able to sort of interrupt him after he blinks in, that's kind of an option for Little Gun. Doesn't feel like it's going to be any more. 11? Kind of big pump in this epicenter. It wants to go in. They need vision of the area, though. Very scary for them. Exorcism's going to be popped. This is going to be so hard for Lilligan to fight into now as well. Like you say, they don't have the vision to fight. There's no, not going to be a flesh going for the next 68 seconds as well. Rupture 25 seconds away. Roshan's not going to last this long. Going to be able to get the Burrow Strike in now as well with the Sandstorm. The real comes out. Yule Scepter. Can they do anything from this? They're going to be able to get the Nightmare Raven just being protected from that. But the Abyssal Blade comes out. They're going to be able to get the kill onto the Sand King. And now they can go into the pit. 4-2-3. He's going to be just out by the Fiend's Grip. The damage is going to be enough. They're going to be able to absolutely clean up here. Four heroes go down. It's going to be five. Sanctity with a slight fist trying to do what he can, but the Aegis on the deck is picked up by the Burr, and it looks like they might be able to carry on going. Sanctity, the lone survivor, and he might... No vision from Yanuel, so he's not going to be able to get the Nightmare off to keep this locked down onto the Ember. 
And yeah, now Fnatic once again, 27 minutes in, not too far off this last game. They're going to be able to march down mid. And look at this, they were out of the base so long, the range rack goes down as well. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, but Ace kind of hesitated dropping the tombstone. They kind of need him to drop it in the Roche pit. Yes, if it gets removed, it gets removed, but you can get the vision instead. Eleven kind of went in, not blind, but didn't have the benefit of the tombstone. Drops the tombstone on the, uh, on the, on the sorry, in the triangle, just immediately found by Armel. That could have been a fact that could have helped them. So it was a tough fight for, no matter what for Little Gun. It's not over yet though, 21k advantage for Fnatic, but Little Gun, they're still holding. They still want to try to do something here, although this melee rack is just going to fall the next hit from the bear. Yeah, the Ancient Seal comes out. They're trying to stack this damage up onto the Spirit Bird, but it's going to be fine. It backs itself away. What's it got? It's got 4k health at total, and Raven obviously got a second one to summon there as well. The heal's coming through from the sidekick, and this bow going to be back to pretty much full health. Massive Manus as well, if he wants to use it. It's very odd for me that 4-2-3 prioritized the Molinir instead of the shards. Like, the, you could have got a decent amount of, shard, of, of damage from it, you know, with uh, and, a, and a bit of extra healing as well, especially when you're hitting very tanky heroes, like, like um, you know, Lone Druid, him or his bear, even... Death Prophet's no slouch in the HP department, but a bit odd, and I don't know if he's going to be able to even finish the item. He needs about 400 gold. They're just smoking. They don't know if they can, are they not going to wait for the Molinir? They're just like, let's go, let's go. We got to fight right now. Ten man smoke here. Look at and this, though. It's... The Burr halfway through uh, double damage rune. Oh, that smoke just breaks, and they're like, all right, everybody go back. All right, 11. And he gets caught in the, in the wrong side. Does have a blink dagger, but can't get out in time. He loses his life. No buyback. And that was a first hit route there as well. The Burr comes in. This double damage rune, look at it going. It's just going to be wearing off as this tier 3 tower goes down. So now they're going to be able to take another set of... Uh, no, just going to go straight for the Abyssal Blade onto the Ember Spirit. The Ember Spirit is going to be caught out and killed off. And again, no buyback. GG is just going to be called 29 minutes in here. Fnatic, two games pre-30 minutes. Just run over Little Gun. It doesn't even take them an hour to go... My God, Fnatic. Very, like, well played. Game 2... Um, yeah, even more convincing, honestly, if you ask me, than game one somehow. It's like, they didn't though it took longer. They're like, no, no, we know exactly what our draft is going to do. We're going to play the, into the, like, just how we want it. Strong pushing potential with their heroes. And they just, Little Gun, I feel like they, they were not expecting this pace. They they played a little bit, not lost, but they were they were outplayed in this game. Fnatic is just a tier above. And definitely one of our, our teams is going to make it to the upper bracket. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, like you say, Lil Gun, they, they looked good in parts, but Fnatic were just a tier ahead. There, were, there was no question that Fnatic had a game plan, they executed it, and they executed Lil Gun, to be fair, in these two matches. Oh. And, yeah, so that is going to be the first series, guys, but don't fret, we do have two more series to come. We're going to be taking a 15-minute break while we wait for this second series to start, which is going to be Army Geniuses versus TNC Predator. We'll see which one's going to come out on top. But for now, like I say, 15 minutes, and we'll be back with the second series of the day. We'll see you then.